Good evening. My name is Sherry Williams and I'll be your moderator for this class. Welcome to the Institute of Divine <laughs> Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes throughout the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. This Tampa class was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the dean of this class, Dr. Joel Turner and the secretary, Dr. Jennifer Marshall. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word, or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim, it has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any letters or characters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by the letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, making such names as Jesus, and Jehovah in possible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud, Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walk the earth plain as Joshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plain? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface to the Holy Name Bible. 
Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. We go about in this school to show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern. And absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Also in this school, we have 10 primary constitutional aims or objectives, and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We'll have tonight's class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Trudy Ann Martin, followed by our scripture lesson, which is Hebrews the 10th, 10th chapter, which will be read by Dr. Jennifer Marshall. Good evening. Good evening. Let's bow our heart and mind so that we can learn what we are about to hear in this class. Yahweh, we just want to thank you for sparing our visitors that are coming and are here to learn this great divine mystery. Open our knowledge and mind and wisdom so that we may understand this lesson that we are about to learn. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible. I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities in various manuscripts, 
revised by Abby Trina of the Scripture Research Association, Incorporated. Hebrews, the tenth chapter. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the thing, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually, make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they have not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience of sin. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sin every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. My ears hast thou pierced, burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O Yahweh. Above, when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offering, even for sin thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O Yahweh. He, that t he taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we by the which will we are sacrificed through the offering of the blood of Yahweh, the body of Yahshua, the Messiah, once for all. And every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of Yahweh. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected for ever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Spirit also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith Yahweh. I will put my law in their inward hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, liberty to enter into the holiest places by the blood of Yahweh, of Yahshua, by a new and living way, which he hath con consecrated for us through the, will, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of Yahweh, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from the evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses of how much more sore punishment should ye sh suppose ye shall he be through worthy who hath trodden under foot the son of Yahweh and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance is mine, I will recompense, saith Yahweh, and again Yahweh shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living Elohim, but call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great flight of afflictions. Partly wise you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst ye become companions of them that were so used. For he hath sympathy with them who were in bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have a heaven, a better, and an enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. 
for ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of Yahweh, ye may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he, he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe in the saving of a soul. Actually, you were our first speaker, so. <laughs> our first speaker this evening will be Dr. Latara Burley. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good evening. Oh, caught me off guard. Um, Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Let's go there. Um, I didn't catch, uh, well, first of all, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> it's a pleasure and a honor and a blessing to um, be here to even, you know, have anything to say about this gospel and I just pray that Yahweh just let me say something what he have given me um, start at um, I guess we go to scripture reading and um, start at um, I guess three it was something that kind of stood out um, Hebrews 10 and 3 yeah but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Mm -hmm. for, it, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Okay, um, keep reading. Yeah. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Are you reading out of the King James? Yes. Um, read it out of the, the Holy Name. Go ahead, Carol. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> it's just so Hebrews different. 10, 10. Yeah. Hebrews 10 and 3. But if those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sin every year. Mm -hmm. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mm -hmm. Mine ears hast thou pierced. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Um, right there, um, you, you see where, well, the world still, um, they still do sacrifices until, you know, other gods, whatever. The churches, they still do physical works and they still think that they have to give sacrifices unto God or, you know. But um, it's, it's not like, it's, it's certain sacrifices that they feel like they can do but they're not doing the whole like they're not keeping like all of them they're just taking like certain ones and say okay well we're gonna do this this and this but here is saying that the blood where is it um four yeah read that for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin that's not taking away your sin if you offering these things like that's the physical way of um that, that was a physical way of worshiping back here under this law, but this couldn't take away their sin. 
So um, what stood out to me was I was reading the Elohim book and I was reading um, volume four when they were talking about works. And um, it goes into, uh, what is it? Um, it says, go to um, John 6 and uh, 28. It was talking about the works of, of um, Yahweh and what you can do. Um, what is the work of Yahweh, pretty much? And it, it, it goes into it in um, the Elohim book. I, I have it right here if you want to. Do you want 6 and 28? Yeah. Go, yeah, 6 and 6, 28 through 29. Yeah, you can do it. 628 is, uh, then they said unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of Elohim? Okay, what shall we do that we might work the works of Elohim? Keep, keep going. And Joshua answered and said unto them, this is the work. So he's telling you this is the work of Yahweh, not saying that that is the work. He's, he's, he's just describing and telling them this is the work of Yahweh. Keep going. That ye believe on him whom he has sent. That you believe on him who he has sent. And people have a, that's the whole thing. Like people don't understand. They think it's a physical work that you have to do. But he's telling you like this is the work that you have to this is the works of Yahweh that you believe on him. And it's not Jesus. It's Yahshua whose name is Yahweh is salvation. And then it goes into, um, it, it, it goes into, um, different things that the world is doing. And, and me coming in here, I didn't think that the Bible talks about every single physical thing that we doing now. Like I was thinking about maybe, you know, a long time ago, they were talking about it's not, it don't have nothing to do with what we're doing now. But no, it does. <laughs> In the Elohim book, it describes every single thing that we do now or, or what the people still do now in the churches to try to worship Yahweh. And it's wrong. It's completely, totally wrong. Um, go to, uh, go to, um, what is, uh, Revel, um, make what goes and making the signs of the cross is Revelations uh, 14 9 and 12 and it's, it's everything physical they're, they're saying the works of the works I mean everything physical they think is worshiping God and it's not that's not true mm -hmm. Revelation 14 and 12 mm -hmm. here is the patience of the sons here are they that keep the commandments of Yahweh. No, it's 14, it's 14, uh, 9. Yeah. 14 and 9. Yeah. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh, which is poured out without mixture unto the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. So they're talking about the, the um, working of the works of the devil. And then um, in the churches, y'all know where they have the, um, they make, I don't know, the Catholic people, the uh, rosary or whatever, um, and they, the signs of the cross with their hands and stuff like this. And I didn't, I didn't, um, I remember going to a place and I was like, um, this before I came into class, I wanted to have something, you know, symbolizing, you know, Jesus at the time where I worship Jesus. So I went and I bought the um, cross with the Mary, but I didn't know that they were rosary beads. And at the time, now I come to realize in coming into this class that even that was against Yahweh because I didn't know that, you know, that the little thing that they had was Mary and that I was worshiping that I was taking that as a sign of I'm thinking that's a sign of life but that's a sign of death and people walking around with this death with this cross on them not knowing that even that is the, uh, the wrong way of worshiping Yahweh and it says it um here and where is it it says oh my goodness worshiping I think it's Matthew 4 and 10. Go to Matthew 4 and 10. And then get Matthew 6 and 7. Matthew 4 and 10. Mm -hmm. Then saith Yahshua unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship Yahweh thy Elohim, and him only shalt thou serve. 
Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. How is that it? Worship, worship, worship of Mary and saints. Started um and and saith unto him all these things. Why give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me? Then said Yahshua unto him, Get thee hence, I say, for they read, Thou shalt worship Yahweh the Elohim, and him only shall thou serve. Okay, I get read that again. Start at nine. Okay. This is Matthew chapter twenty-four, verse twenty-one. Matthew twenty-four, verse twenty-one. Yeah. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Yahshua unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship Yahweh the Elohim, and, that, him, okay, okay, and him only shalt thou serve. So thou shalt worship Yahweh thy Elohim, and him only shalt thou serve. But you you see that that's not what's going on in the world. Like people, if they fall down and they worship Mary as... You know their God and their mother, like that's still what's going on. And 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 here back here in Matthew, they're talking about you not worshiping no no one else. That you only supposed to worship Yahweh and Him only. Go to uh, Matthew, what is it called Matthew um, six. And see uh, six and <coughs> six. <coughs> but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and mm -hmm. thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly but when ye pray use not vain repetitions mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me as the heathen do as the they, heathen do uh -huh. they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking and don't i don't know the the prayer that they say in the catholic church but they use the rosary reads they put their hands together and was like hail mary something oh, something Lord, whatever Lord, i don't know Lord, but Lord, they Lord, say Lord, the same Lord, thing Lord, oh Lord, it's, Lord. it's it's is it here yeah. Oh, you know no, it. I know it. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the that's their way. It's like, yeah. and you they're using vain repetition. Like it's not coming from the heart. It's not a, a um a spiritual way of worshiping. It's is it's like a like a ritual. Like she was talking about. Yeah. It, they're saying it over and over again, but it doesn't mean anything. That's not the way of worshiping Yahweh. And they thinking that these physical things, like these works, um, and it's talking about here in the Elohim book how it's talking about the the wafers. Um, that is, uh, let me see. What is it? Um, how about the crackers? Ooh. I'm sorry. I didn't, I don't have these things. Um, underline. We're talking about the wafer, the rosary beads. Um, it's talking about the communion, uh, which they still do with the crackers and the, um, grape juice, um, the cup for beating to people at communion. And that's Colossians 2. And 20, let's go and get that. It's just every, like, Yahweh covers everything. And it's not like, it. nothing is new, you know, what we doing. This is what was going on back then. And there's still, it's the same thing. The mystery of iniquity have people taking these old covenants and they're still dragging it on to this side and thinking that this is the way of worshiping your creator and it's not it's it's spirit it's spiritual it's not physical anymore do you have that second colossians 2 and 20. Mm -hmm. wherefore if you be dead with yahshua from the rudiments of the world why as though living in the world are you subject to ordinances mm -hmm. touch not taste not handle not which all are to perish with the using. Touch not, taste not, handle not, <laughs> which is always perish with the using. Is it, uh, keep going. Is there any more there? After the commandments of the doctrines of men, which mm -hmm. have indeed a show of wisdom in all worship and humility and neglecting of the body, but is not honor to the satisfying of the flesh. It is not honor to the satisfying of the flesh. And they do this every first sunday i know some churches do it every first sunday the same time the same place after church service they wash feet they take the cracker or whatever they have and they take the uh crepe reduced with this little cup or whatever and they they do it every single sunday every single month not every single sunday every month the first of the month i remember because i used to go to a church and i never went because <laughs> i thought it was a waste of time and y'all it says in the scripture touch not touch not taste not and 
it handle not and it's, it's it's like how much more do they don't read the bible at all everything that they do this bible it as far as christianity is concerned it just hit them upside it just knocks them right down and it's like if you present this to them it's is is it's like it's coming out of your mouth, but it's not coming out of our mouth. This is what Yahweh's saying. This is his words. This is what he has to say about what he wants to be worshipped. And that's um, John 4 and 24. And we, if we can get that. Because it's just, it's, yeah. Yahweh is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It has to be in spirit and it has to be in truth. So you have to know what the spirit is and you have to know what the truth is. What the truth is, is, is not a lie. The truth is going to be is Yahshua the Messiah. Like that is the truth. That's who you're supposed to worship. Like he, this is, this is what he has to say of how he wants to be worshiped. But the people out there, they want to worship in their own way. Um, it, it has where it says it has um where it talk it talk it goes into everything as far as the words in Elohim book and it goes into they describe purgatory how um the the Catholics and the people believe in purgatory um the oh here it is the um of the wafer that's uh it's the same same thing yeah John six did I call that John six and fifty three it talks about. talk about the wafer. John 6 and 53. Then Yahshua said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and mm -hmm. drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and mm -hmm. my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, Dwelleth in me, and I in him. Mm -hmm. And then 63. 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Mm -hmm. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. Okay, yeah. So here it's talking about, if you um, read um, things 53 through 63, that um, unless you, um, read that again, unless you drink of my, okay. unless you so eat. Those who, this is 54. I'll start at 53. Then Yahshua said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. So here he's talking about, Yahshua talking about, Eat the flesh of him and drink his blood, you have no life in you. So, But they don't understand that. They're thinking that they have to eat the the physical things and drink the physical things that, that give them life. But it's not because they have to keep coming back and doing the same thing every single month, you know. And so... Um, it's dead works. Is is th these works are not giving you life. Um, go continue. Um, go to the scripture, um, reading, and then I'll have my seat. I won't ten, be up here long. Ten, ten. You want me to start at one? Where Where do we leave off at? Hebrews ten. And I think she started at three. I, yeah, okay. started at three. Hebrews 10 and 3. In those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mm -hmm. My ears hast thou pierced. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. He doesn't require us to do burnt offerings and sin offerings anymore. It's, it's, it's not the physical things. It's the um, is we're in the spirit now. Um, keep going. Seven. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O Yahweh. So he comes, he's saying right here, Lo, he comes in the volume of the book that it is written of him. And we understand that the volume of the book are the law and the prophets. Like that is, it was what is talking about Yahshua the Messiah. So if we have, if we can understand anything about him we have to go to the law and the prophets because that is that is what is is going to give us is one is what is going to sustain us um throughout anything everything um keep going eight above when he said sacrifice and offering and burnt offering even for sin thou wouldest not neither had his pleasure therein which are offered by the law 
Then he then said he, Lo, I come in to do thy will, O Yahweh. Mm -hmm. He take away the first, that he may establish the second. So he took away that first covenant, that first law that they had back here in um in um Egypt. He took that away because that couldn't make them righteous. That couldn't save them. That they died back there um in the wilderness of Sinai that he, Yahweh had to make a second one. Um he had to establish the second. Read that again. Nine. He, then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O Yahweh. Mm -hmm. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Mm -hmm. By the which will we, will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahshua the Messiah once for all. So we are sanctified by this um, offering of Yahshua the Messiah. Um and I'm just going to stop right there because I didn't read the whole thing because my baby was, you know. <laughs> so um, I just had that in mind. I, I wish I could go over it more. But, um, yeah, it's just these, if you go in like the Elohim um, book, volume four, like it goes over everything as far as the works and everything that um, they're doing as far as physical works. And that's not way Yahweh wants to be worshipped is we're in the new covenant and he's Yahweh is spiritual. He's not in the church. He's not uh, on the cross, not on the bees and clapping hands and whoop whoop and all that. <laughs> so uh, with that, I just say thank you for the opportunity. And I have my seat. <laughs> And our next speaker this evening will be David Garagon. Gar one? Garan Garan. I'm oh, sorry. Good evening. How's everybody? Let me say thank you to Yashua for giving us all the opportunity to show up this evening. Mm -hmm. Weather was horrendous. I spent an hour crossing the bridge. It was exciting. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, really when I look at this, as we look at Hebrews 10 here, you know, Yahweh is immensely patient. And that was what I was reminded of driving across the bridge. Patience. When we look at the law that he handed down, no matter how they broke it, he didn't destroy them all. He tried to break them. You know, he tried to break their will and their spirit. And he kept saying, it's really simple. You just got to worship me. You have to pay attention to me. You have to give thanks to me. The sin offerings that they did, we know that they were, use they were useless. They just reminded them of their sin. That's all. Yash was telling them that right here. This is all for naught. He doesn't really care about this. What he cares is about you. He cares about your soul. He cares about you doing the right things. This is just to, to smack you in the head a little bit, to remind you that you messed up. He does this all the time. All the time. To us constantly. And it is a simple gospel. What Latar was saying is, when she brought it out, he wants us just to say his name. It's the most basic thing. The names lecture is always fascinating me because it is that basic want and need. It's a basic need we all have. You like to be called your name. I like to be called my name, right? Why is it so hard for people when they're given this information to accept it? The flesh is so deep. The flesh is so deep. It's amazing to me the lies. Amber and I often discuss this at home. You know, I, I look at Christianity very differently because of where I'm coming to class in my life. Okay? I'm much, much later. I, I don't berate them. I feel bad for them. They try to do a lot of his works. They try to uphold a lot of principles that Yahshua does talk about doing the right thing, treating each other with kindness. You know, these are basic tenets of everyone's life. But they just can't get beyond 
the names. When you think about the law, the law itself, do not call me by anything else. The most basic thing that we all need and drives greed is money. And there, right on it, they put it right there. In God we trust. <laughs> right there in front of everyone's face. Now, the really sick thing is when you get down to this, when you look at the whole creation, all right? The whole creation. There's one economy that drives the whole creation right now. That's us. So our money is all around the world promoting the biggest lie that there is. And everybody wants it. They do anything for it. Anything. They're willing to sell themselves, sell their souls totally. Life has very little value to, to a dollar. We see that constantly in the news. We see it so much that we become numb to it. But it's right there. The biggest lie is right there. And everybody, everyone desires that one object, be it a penny to a hundred dollar bill. It's on it all. Greed is a very interesting thing because you think that people would be greedy for much, much different, different wealth. Money, money is a very odd thing for me. It's an odd thing. I can make it. It comes and goes. Does it drive me? No. No. Different things drive me. And as I've been in class, it's changed even more. I wake up, I look out, there's a tree right outside this one window. And I say to Amber, I love this tree because I get to look at it every day and it reminds me of Yahweh. I have life, death, burial, resurrection, all right here. That tree's going to grow. It's spreading seeds everywhere. It's going to die. It's going to rot. And it's going to bring more life to those seeds that it has spread. So the purpose is shown right there. Mm -hmm. Then I go next step. We have this table that I happen to love. It's a very pretty table. Nice mid-century piece. <laughs> Amber picked it out. It looks beautiful, of course. Um, and I often go, you know, it's the refinement of that tree to this that I find interesting as well. Because that tree had to go through a death. Yahweh had to give inspiration to some artist, designer, craftsperson to take that dead thing, refine it, make it better, make it justified and purified enough so that it was aesthetically pleasing to us. So there again, I see the purpose right there. Because what are we trying to do? We're trying to justify ourselves, make ourselves more perfect, be better, all right? Now, we can't really do that. We know we're puppets on a string. We're kind of falling through this whole thing. But we do the best we can. We know that these works aren't going to save a soul anywhere. We know that. So it's nice to remind ourselves that what we have to do is what? Say his name. Say his name everywhere. I say it to people everywhere I go. People look at me like I'm crazy. I don't give a damn. <laughs> I'm proud of who I am. I'm happy to be part of this. I'm glad to share the gospel with whomever will lend me their ear. Right next door is a preacher, a reverend. I don't know her, I know her husband. Mr. George and I talk a lot because he's always out working on his roses and stuff. So, you know. I say the names to him all the time. Today he actually was over talking to me. He said, I said to my wife those names. I said, yeah. I said, you told her about the crazy white guy across the street? He went, yes, I did. I said, what did she say? She, she said, he's right. Those names do exist. I said, well, go ask her this. I said, go ask her where we're living. He said, what do you mean? I said, go ask her where we're living. 
I said, are we living in a total paradise or are we living in a penal colony? And he went, okay. <laughs> so he'll trot off, he'll come back in a week. You know, I have no doubt. You know, we have a good relationship, he and I. But you know, I often remind people of that as well. It's a beautiful thing we have yeah. that he's given us. He shows us every day, everywhere. Every day I'm reminded. I'm raking up leaves. This morning, there are shoots coming up. Purpose is revealed again. There is a death, a burial, and a resurrection right there. They were never gone. They were just there, just like us, just like him and us. Thank you for letting me speak to you all this evening. I hope somebody got something out of this. I don't know if I did. I'll find out later. Um, Thank you for your time. Let's say hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you want to get that? Sure. Oh, you don't want to get that? No. There's an upcharge for that. There's an upcharge for that. You got a dollar? <laughs> I'll show you. You want a war? I'll show you. And our next speaker this evening will be Dr. Sonia Roberts. looked at me and I looked away like no she's not looking at me <sighs> okay um, <clears throat> I'm going to see I don't feel well um, let's see okay I'm thinking about um, obedience and all right let's start with um saul when he messed up um and samuel told him so it's going to be in first samuel he told him that you know uh, uh saul said what did he say he said i have all these sacrifices to give to yahweh and he said which do you think he would prefer obedience or sacrifices uh, that's what I'm looking for. <clears throat> I, I believe it is in 1 Samuel. And so it's when they go out and there were, remember, Yahweh would tell them, uh, he said, you wipe them out, right? And so this was the one battle where um, Saul did not, he didn't do that. Here we go. It's, um, yes, it's 15 and, hmm, where do we... Uh, that's where it is. I'm just wondering if that's where we, right. Okay. Yeah, I guess we can. We can do 10. That's fine. 10? Mm-hmm. First Sam 15, 10. Or actually, I'm so sorry. No, right. Let's do 8. 8. And he took a, a gag the king of the Amalekites alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared a guy. Is that how you say that? A guy. A guy. A guy. A guy. A guy. And the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good. It would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and ref refuge that they destroyed utterly. Then came the word of Yahweh unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth it me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me, and hath not performed my commandments. 
and it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto Yahweh all night. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set up a place, and has gone about, and passed on, and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of Yahweh, I have performed the commandment of Yahweh. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleating of the sheep in mine ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people's spirit for the best of the sheep and of the oxen, to sacrifice unto Yahweh thy Elohim, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what Yahweh has said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And Yahweh anointed thee king over Israel. Mm -hmm. So he's reminding him of everything that was done for, for him, right? Mm -hmm. Because if we go back and if we look at the appointing of Saul, then we talk, we'll see that when he goes in, because... Um, um, Samuel's called out for all of the different kings, right? And he's, he, he's um, except for Solomon, but he goes and he, he's the one who's told to go out and seek out Saul and go seek out David, right? And so he picks them out. And um, it, when he seeks Saul, Saul was the one, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the, the oxen were lost, right? And he's the one who went chasing after them. And so... Um, so when Samuel is looking at the family that was designated to have the child that would be the next king, it's like Saul is sort of the lowly of the group, right? And the same happens with David. Go ahead. <clears throat> 18, and Yahweh sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the, the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of Yahweh? Right, one second. But Saul said, when he was talking to um, Samuel, and Saul said, that um, he comes back and he says, Blessed be thou, Yahweh, I have performed the commandment of Yahweh. As far as he was concerned, he did what he was asked, right? Go ahead. But didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of Yahweh? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of Yahweh, and have gone the way which Yahweh sent me, and have brought Agag the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto Yahweh thy Elohim and Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath Yahweh as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of Yahweh. Okay, so even when sacrifices were in, so to speak, he still told him, would he take greater delight in these sacrifices that were acceptable during that time, or does he take greater delight in obedience, obeying his word? Because that's not what I told you to do. Even though this is a time of sacrifice, I didn't tell you to go out there and to gather up the best and sacrifice them unto me. So obedience is what Yahweh desires, right? Go ahead. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of Yahweh, he hath also rejected thee from being king. And so then all heck breaks loose for Saul, right? And so um, it's beautiful when you look back at that whole journey there, because I think that that's what both of the previous speakers were talking about. Yahweh has always asked, for us to be obedient. Mm -hmm. And so it has been important for us to understand and only through a divine vision and revelation, only him working in us to understand what is required of us mm -hmm. based on where we are in time, right? But always it was obedience, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so the question is, what is he asking of you right now? And so as Tara was saying, uh, in regards to uh, righteousness and truth, that is being asked. Um, but also, go ahead, Matthew 11 and 29. Matthew 11 
Take my yoke upon you, mm -hmm. and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, <coughs> and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Mm -hmm. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. He says it's easy, right? He says that he wants us to learn of him. And in learning of him, there's a lot of unlearning to do, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <coughs> and a lot of times... Uh, that is the hard part of it is that we've been <sighs> there's something that's on my mind but I can't do it yet because I, I want to have all the references for you with it but um, I will say we've been talking in my classes about this word transcendence and um, We've been talking about it in regards to just worldly knowledge um, because actually as the scholars and sometimes what happens in education is that we pull from these philosophers. But what they talk about is the uh, ability of educators, enlightened people, whatever, whomever, to uh, transcend. And in looking at the word transcend and looking at how they were using it, they're talking about the ability to see beyond the material that is there, so to speak, right? Uh, it's to look beyond the tangible, essentially. And, and Yahweh has asked all of us to see beyond these types and shadows and to really understand what this is about. But as we always say here, he has to be the one working in you to allow you to do that, right? Because um, I know where it's at, and I'm not going to probably remember unless I go there. But, oh, where is it in my head? When Yahshua is here and he says, it's my father in me, right, that allows this to happen. Oh, well, we talk about the fact that they are a unity, but again, we are supposed to be a part of that. We are supposed to be one with that. So it has to be uh, Yahweh in us working this as well, right? He's the only one who can reveal it to us. And um, as David was saying, you can't, um, you, you can't be judgmental of other people. Um, you have to understand that what you have is a blessing and that if it weren't Yahweh's will, you wouldn't see it either. Um, and so I guess what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back through some of these examples that were in here um, where it, it's very clear that obedience is what he was asking of them. Um, and then I'm going to take my seat because I'm like seeing stars here. <laughs> Um, so let's go to, so we went to Saul when he messed up, right? And then, um, let's go to David with Bathsheba. And then after that, if we can get David, when he counts, uh, the people, he's not supposed to count them. <clears throat> because what, what I, what I love about I've always loved Samuel like that's been one of my favorite uh, books and it's because Hannah starts out with this song right here she is um, she is the wife who is barren we're familiar with that right mm -hmm. and um, she's asking for a child and so it gives you this story where she is one of the two wives and um, she is, uh, her husband does not look down upon her and he says, you know, he's like, isn't my love enough? I don't need for you to have, um, I don't need for you to have a child. Uh, but the other wife uh, is constantly teasing her about this. And so she goes and she prays to Yahweh for this child. And if he gives her this child, it rolled, <laughs> just rolled. <laughs> and if um, he gives her the child, he says that he will, she will offer the child back up. And so that's how Samuel ends up growing up, right, under the tutelage of Eli. So um, Hannah's song is about, I guess we'll start, let's start there. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm Samuel, second chapter. Samuel. Is that where she talks about how Yahweh, he uh, takes the low and he lifts them up? 
Let's go there. <clears throat> It's like she's, I think it's where she's giving praise after, um, let me see if I get there. Is it the second chapter? I'm not there yet. I just got there. First Samuel, second chapter, and Hannah prayed unto and Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in Yahweh. My horn is exalted in Yahweh. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies, because I rejoice in thy salvation. Mm -hmm. There is none holy as Yahweh. There is none besides thee. Neither is there any rock like Yahweh. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogance, arrogancy come out of your mouth. For Yahweh is Elohim of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread. Now notice the contrast, right? So those that were low, he lifts them up, mm -hmm. and those that were high, he brings them down, right? right. Go ahead. Five, they that were full have hired out themselves for bread. And they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren hath borne seven, and she that hath many children is waxed feeble. Yahweh killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. So this is what, what uh, David was talking about, right? This whole process and how he's in control over all of it. And I was thinking about that because I was, um, I was reading over um, in Noah, and they were talking about that rainbow being that covenant. Right. And so when when you when you learn of him and you understand and you look and you see that rainbow, that rainbow means something different to us. When that sun sets and we see that blue, purple and scarlet in the sky, it means something different to us. When we see the sun rising every day, that is a testament uh, to us, you know, it, it's just, and it's amazing how it just all has a different connection for you. And that is the Romans 1, 19 and 20. That's the physical representing the spiritual, right? But if he, if, if you, if he's never taken you to that chapter, if he's never, um, made it clear to you, allowed you to see beyond those words, what that means, right? Then, it's still a sun rising, a sun setting. It's still a rainbow in the sky. It's beautiful, aesthetically pleasing, but you don't understand its true meaning. You don't understand what it's pointing to. Go ahead. Six. Yahweh killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. Yahweh maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. <coughs> He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill, to set them among princes, and to make them inherit the mm -hmm. throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are Yahweh's, and he hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his sons, and the wicked shall be set in darkness. Okay, so it says, again, he will be the one who keeps the feet of his sons, right? So he's going to be the only one who will allow us. And I think that was in our scripture lesson. He's going, he is our uprightness. We talk about that, right? Um, before when we were talking about the ability to stand, that's him. And the whole point of, um, we talk about with uh, everything that they were taught, to, they were taught to do out there, the processes, you know, it was pointing to his power, the fact that they needed a creator, he was going to be their salvation. And she says, I rejoice in thy salvation, right? That's what's put here. And so that's what I was looking at when I was reading through these scriptures, because it's kind of like you have to put the Bible on rotation in a way until you're like, you know, because, and this is what I mean, like, by the time you get to the end, you kind of have to start over because there's so much in there, you know. And so and so then, but it's all it's all witnessing. It's all very clear. But there's so much. There's so many witnesses if there's such a thing. Right. Uh, like he says, Yahweh is an L of knowledge. And so then 
this knowledge that he is giving to us, that's our stability. And we've talked about that before. All right. So let's let's uh, quickly go to where I was trying to go. Um, so David and Bathsheba, let's go there for a second. Right. And and I want the part where. Um, uh, OK, so quickly he sees Bathsheba, but Sheba has a, a husband and David knows, but he wants her. So he has her. She gets, sends him a letter or something, says she's pregnant. So then he's like, OK, so he, he's, he puts Uriah in the front line of war so that he can be killed off and so that he can um, marry her. Right. Well, of course, that was not um, acceptable to Yahweh. But it's very interesting how Yahweh does this because he's going to send. Who does he send to talk to him? It's, it's like it comes in a parable, right? Uh, that's what I want, where Yahweh sends the person and he, and he tells them sort of the, the problem. I'm wondering if it was Nathan at that time. I know it's Nathan Second, later. Second Samuel 12, chapter 10. Um, I'm trying to think of the one. Start at 1. Second Samuel 12 and 1. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd, to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As Yahweh liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man, mm -hmm. thus saith Yahweh Elohim of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. Mm -hmm. And I gave thee thy master's house, and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little... I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Mm -hmm. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of Yahweh to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite, to be thy wife. Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. So very, these, I know, right? And it just, we talk about the Bible, and you know, like, he doesn't just say learn of me, but he makes it very engaging, right? So when you're being obedient and you are um, sh reading these various um, historical events, and I, I always reference them that way because I had to teach the Bible as literature, you know. So um, by no means do we want to come in here and continue to think of them as these fictional cool stories right but th this is a record this is a record that is this is a memorial actually it's a living memorial of of everything that he's done this process that he's laid out right and so every time David would go into war he'd ask Yahweh is it okay are you going to be with me you know they they are constantly looking to him for battle when Saul asks and Yahweh does not answer him and and he's scared because Yahweh's um not no longer speaking to him and if you remember and he has to go in unto the woman and then they have to call up you know uh Samuel because Samuel had died at that time I mean all of this is about Again, it's obedience that that's that's what we see uh, being stressed. You are obedient and I will show you my power. 
And if you are obedient, then I will bless you. Like he told David, he said, I've given you everything, everything. If you wanted another woman, I could have given you one. But you took his, you know. And so that was the thing. And so it's not, you know, and you, uh, it's not about... Um, these kind of riches because they had them right David Solomon and they had the riches tangible worldly riches but he has hmm. oh yeah they had plenty of wives and concubines right so I mean it wasn't it wasn't about any of those we were talking about lusts on Sunday on Sunday right whatever they lusted for could have lusted for he had given them plenty that wasn't it so they had all of these riches but we have to also think about what are the riches that Yahweh has given us that we don't want to lose because we are not being obedient based on what obedience is right now you know what it what how he has defined it for us right so um I'll do that what I what did I say I was I said that and then I said that um <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> I'm sorry okay I said, I'm trying to I'm trying to sit down quickly I'm sorry okay um <laughs> I said what I was going to do. Let me let me think about this for a second. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> uh, there are a lot of examples, um, but you know, uh, I, I guess what what I've seen, and I think this is this is why it's so important to read it, is the way that he orchestrates. You know, that's the beautiful part about it. You talk about. Um, how he delivers. This is a story of deliverance, right? Mm -hmm. And so whether we're talking about um, Moses, and uh, this was brought up on Sunday, and we talk about the fact that Moses is brought up in Pharaoh's house, or even if we talk about the fact you go back with David. And I was looking at this because I remembered that David and Jonathan were close, but I didn't remember all of those significant events. You know, had it not been for Jonathan, Pharaoh's, um, Pharaoh, Saul's son, right? And, and that, that friendship, that bond, right? And, and actually, it's beautiful the way Jonathan says it, the way it's worded, because he says, we are of one soul or something like that. That's how he references him. That connection is what allows, that's Yahweh's way, allowing that. But again, their souls were knit together. Their souls were knit together in love, right? And so when, it, I mean, all of it, it was just, I've just enjoyed rereading it. You know, how he shoots the arrows and he gives him the war. I mean, it's just all, when you, when you watch all of it unfold, you know. So, so again, though, my point is, so it's Pharaoh's daughter. Here it is, again, Saul's son. Saul's son is making sure that David can get away. These are the vessels Yahweh chooses to use, right? Because um, he's showing it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your purpose is, right? And then if you think about, I mean, like I said, it has just been hilarious to me rereading it because there um, David is sent in to play the heart for, for um, Saul, right? And then he's um, throwing the javelin at him. I mean, the whole thing <laughs> is just... Um, Yahweh has a sense of humor. And um, again, he makes his point well continuously. Uh, in the battles, just everything, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's all for us. If we do what he has asked us to do, he uh, will give you comfort and will give you um, the witnesses that you need in whatever way you might need to believe that he is real. And that's what it's for. You know, it's for us to really feel comfortable and confident in the fact that he is real. And so um, now with Solomon, when we get over there, what's interesting with Solomon, and I think something similar, it may have been with um, one of the later kings, but um, all these idols come back in again, and they were talking about that. There's all of this. There's a pattern he runs throughout a principle of who you let into your space, 
who you let into your life, into your house. Uh, but more importantly, forget about the physical bodies that are outside of you. Yes, they can be distracting, but also the thoughts that you harbor, right? And what you let, um, what you let occupy you, right? So Solomon blessed with everything, but then he gets down and he marries these different women, right? And he marries outside. So we can go there for one second. Maybe in Kings by then. Mm-hmm. What do you worry about it? Eleven. When he, when he starts to talk about um, so Solomon marrying all of the different women, he told them that they were supposed to stay inside, love many strange women. Here it is, 11. <clears throat> First Kings 11, 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, woman of the Moabites, Amorites, Edomites, Zidonites, and Hittites, <laughs> of the nations concerning which Yahweh said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love, and he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred <laughs> You guys didn't know those wives. numbers. <laughs> Mm -hmm. For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, what his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with Yahweh his Elohim, as was the heart of David and his father. Mm -hmm. So, Solomon, one second, I'm sorry. So he had 700 wives. They were princesses, right? They weren't your average women, right? And 300 um, concubines. And um, again, it wasn't, the number was not in question, but it was the fact that um, he was told that he should not be with these women of other nations. And that's something they were constantly told, right? Um, but again, moving beyond the whatever is physically represented here, right? So are we, what, what thoughts? Are we allowing ourselves to house, so to speak, to intercourse with? We were using that term before, right? How, what are we interacting with? What are we taking on? Um, you know, do we understand that these sacrifices are out and our only hope of salvation is in Yahweh? Do we understand that? And just how are we allowing that um, to, well, how are we allowing? We're not allowing. But it's like, you know, let's do this. Um, let's go to Romans, let's go Romans 10 and 4. Romans 10 and 4. That's a part of our vocabulary, right? This, what we... Mm -hmm. Sonia's going to do this. I have a plan, right? I remember in college they told us, make your four-year plan, right? We're supposed to be planners. We're supposed to have things that we do. We accomplish goals, all this good stuff, right? But that's what I'm talking about with the unlearning. You, you, it just all has to be, um, to be removed. Everything has to be put in its place, and that's, and that's making sure that Yahweh is first. And um, it's amazing. The word I wanted to go into was persona. I had to, I had to write about it in a paper. And I, I didn't, I wanted to have the actual quote, but, but this, is what, this is what keeps staying on my mind. And, and it's everything because we're so caught up, like you said, a name, why? Because we're taught Sonia is so important. 
you know, and I don't mean that like your parents necessarily, you know, my, my mom was really good about keeping me grounded um, in, in that way. I won't share all those stories, but, um, <laughs> but you know, there, there, she, she was, but she was, I mean, how could she not be if she's in class and right. she's about this, then the conversations that we have are not going to be ones about, oh, Sonia, you're so special. You get what I'm saying? That's not how you raise your kids yeah. if this is what you're about. Yeah. So that wasn't it. But we still all have to go out into this world. Mm -hmm. And we're still all just immersed, right, <laughs> in, in, in all of these things that are out there in this world. So what was interesting about this term persona was that they were talking about the fact that we are taught, we are taught to take on a personality, so to speak. We are taught to embody, to be something, um, which is interesting because if you, that's why I wanted to have the quote when I go over it. When, when you look at it, what they're saying is that everything that we present in this world is fake. We are taught to take on an identity. Do you get what I mean? What I'm saying there when I say you take it on. So it's not like you come in and you and you go on a journey to discover. No, you go. Your 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 search is for an established identity, if that makes sense. Do, you know, you get kind of the difference. You know, and so then Yahweh reveals to you that. The only identity that you should aspire to is being one with him. And there's nothing worldly, worldly that you can possess. Good credit doesn't get me there. Right. You know, uh, degrees don't get me there. Um, whatever languages, whatever, whatever your thing was that you thought that made you so special. It doesn't get you there. Right. He has to be the one. So that was the same thing. And that's what David was talking about with people. They try so hard. And why not? Because that's easy. Do you get what I'm saying? These, these carnal ordinances, that's easy in the sense that it's something that they have been immersed in and that they understand better than what this gospel is about, which is a creator who tells you, I'm, I'm doing it all for you. That, that's a, we don't know how to do nothing. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, under, we don't know that because we've been taught for so long that we're in control, that we, you know, you're navigating your own ship, all this crap. You know what I mean? And, and so it's, <laughs> stop. So. So isn't that amazing when he says your work is to believe, right? And then it's not fancy, it's plain. And I'm sorry, I'm just going through my, like my own therapy. Um, but, well, because, you know, and I think Judith was right. Um, we're going through this job placement thing right now. That's where we are in the part of this process that I'm in. And so it's like these people, you know, they have f their own stake in the future that they would like for me to have. I am a commodity to them, if that makes sense, right? So, so my future destination, whatever it might be, is a reflection of their institution. So they're invested in me. And that's not important to me. You know, and I remember a time when it was, I promise you, I, 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 I still like money, but I understand its place. I understand its place. You know what I mean? But so we've all gone through those times like they, we've all, you had it, you, you, you learned, he shows you. This is what he did. And, and now he has me in a different place, but I feel a little better. Um, understand what I'm about to say because it was important for me that it happened this way. There were very few things that I asked Yahweh for that I did not get. 
as far as, and of course it was all according to his will, yeah. but we think we're praying and we think we're doing these things. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what I should have been praying about. I was really caught up in things, right? So, so, so whether it be education, whether it be promotion, whatever, even men, and then you have to ask him to take them back, right? <laughs> so whatever the case, you're like, oops, I messed up. But whatever, whatever I asked him for, I, I will say, I mean, there, it was given to me, but for me to understand this, that there was still something that I was missing. Yes. Do you get what I'm saying? Like you feel like you're at a good place where, oh, I'm financially stable. Oh, I'm well educated. Oh, I'm whatever your little checklist was because I had a checklist, right? But then what? But then what? Somebody's mean to you on your job, and people have never been mean to you before you've lived a really sheltered life, right? <laughs> and then and then you go read your Elohim book, and you're like, please make it okay, you know? And But, you yeah, know, I'm, I'm just being honest. And so then he shows you that you, you need something else. First of all, this is not fulfilling. This is a series of people using you. Because you can go work at a job, and you can do crazy hours, right? And as teachers, you know, we really don't. There's no clock, right? So that was, I gave everything to my job, and he showed me, and he gave whatever promotions I wanted, he gave them to me, and then he sent me through the experiences where he showed me, these people don't give a crap about you, but this is where you're putting all of your time and energy. Do you get what I'm saying? And so then you have to figure out, well, what is it? He, so, so did he give me everything that I thought I wanted? He gave me everything that I thought I wanted, but then he showed me, you're still missing something, Sonia. It doesn't have the value. It doesn't give you the stability. It doesn't give you... Uh, I, there were these things that were about to happen in my life that I was not going to be prepared for. The degrees weren't going to matter. The money, whatever, it wasn't going to help me through that. And, 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 and that's where he has to have us all, no matter what it is, no matter where you start, no matter where you end, he will show you none of it prepares you if you don't have him in you, working in you, giving you the stability. And so that's why <laughs> I am looking for, and I've said this before, I, I have to go through this program, but I want the job that requires the least of me <laughs> for the most money. No, but, <laughs> no, but, you know, but do you get what I'm saying? It allows me, because I get it, I've done that. I, 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 that was the, the crap, the dream, <laughs> being good here, that, that's the journey that all these people are on in this world, to get, you know, chasing, and he calls it a dream, because again, he has a sense of humor, yeah. right, he says the American dream, and he says, have your retirement, not him, excuse me, they tell you, retirement in order but we've seen it all crash like yeah, Cynthia you were yeah. talking about the guy who commits suicide we don't want to be in that place where we are everything that we've invested in this world that's where we've invested let me put it to you that way that's that's our only stability you know we don't I, I walked away from good money because I needed a break so that I could read, so that I could do what he has asked of us, which is to learn of him, right? And so sometimes he causes you to go through things so that you, you get it. You can prioritize and you get the preparation that you need because you don't know what's on tomorrow. You don't know. And so those sacrifices, if any, that we have to make, we think they're sacrifices, but it's letting go. It's letting go of all of these carnal things that we have been taught. We've been taught to worship. We've been taught to think that they are so important, starting with self, right? 
we've been taught to think that we are so important. And as Dave said, the only name that matters is Yahweh's. It is. That's the only name that matters. And that's why when you look, right, we were talking about that, the image that you want to see, how are we tr trying to be shaped and formed in that womb, right? Right now being shaped and formed, we want to make sure that we come out and there's no question, no DNA test needed, right? We look just like him. We are one with him. And, and, and that's such a huge journey. And I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to make it connect to the scripture lesson. But I, I guess that's just where I, um, he has us all where we're at. So hopefully that was helpful for somebody. And it, 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 it helps them. But... Um, that's what I think about when I think about the end of this law and, and what that's all about. You know, it was just about, un to me, for me, understanding that he's the salvation. He, it's him, you know. And, and whatever we think that we're going to acquire in this world that's going to give us some stability, he'll either allow you to see it won't or he'll take it away from you so that you understand that it won't you know and we want to make sure that we are spiritually prepared we are spiritually armed to be able to uh accept whatever it is that comes our way and, and to understand too that you know uh he blesses us you know because even though um <laughs> i am titleless at the moment put it that way um as far as all these worldly things are going on right i'm alex's mom that's who i am it's funny we went through this thing where he was the principal son i'm alex's mom now and that's beautiful to me you know and um it's um very um oh, it's calming right he lets you find calm and peace in that because um you get to be about your father's business and not about the business of the world not working for them, you know, and, and doing uh, whatever it is that they're asking of you. That's only for their gang, right? Go back to Kings again. What did he tell them? Essentially, he said they will use the heck out of you, That's right. right? And why? For them. It will, it, will, it will advantage you in no way, you know? And so um, that was a roller coaster of a testimony. Sorry about that. But... Um, I, I hope it, you know, help. But that's what it is. He said, thy salvation and thy rock and all of them. That's what I hear throughout. David has a song that he sings and, he, and he's giving praise to Yahweh. And that's what he talks about. He's his shield. He's his rock. Mm -hmm. He's his salvation. And, and that's when we come in here and we do what we're told to do. And we learn of him. And we see that. You don't, you don't need this amount of money in your bank account. You don't need this degree. You don't need this whatever you thought you needed. You need him. And, 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 and that's, and if you had all those other things, you know he's far more reliable. He is reliable. He's the only reliable. He's the creator, you know. And so there, is, there, there are just so many things that we say, but when he makes them a reality for you, that's the power in it. Is when it becomes a reality for you and so I don't have I don't think I have the words to articulate that you know what what that means when the, the feeling that comes when he proves his existence his realness to you you know I there is peace and stability and consolation that comes with it, you know. Um, so I'll end there. I hope you got something out of it. And our next speaker this evening will be Dr. Joel Turner. Um, if it's close enough. Can you hear me? 
Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No. Oh, okay. It's gotta be. How's that? Yep. Okay. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed class so far. Um, Pam is in South Carolina for business, but it seems like every time Sonia gets up on the floor, she says to me afterwards, I totally get Sonia. She <laughs> says that. She's, she's, uh, and you know, it's, it's that way too yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah. where you just connect with yeah. what somebody says. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's Yahshua really giving you um, what you require, you know. Um, you know, it's kind of, kind of like a, uh, with kids. You know, um, when Jacob was little, one thing that distressed me more than anything was he wouldn't eat. You know, I would try to feed him and he wouldn't eat. And the doctor told me that um, not to worry about it, that, you know, when they're hungry, they will eat. They, they will, and, and um, they will eat what they require. And um, he's still alive, and he's, and he's taller than me. And uh, he, he, you know, so, so I, I, guess, I guess it was right. It still didn't stop me from trying to force feed him, though. <laughs> but, um, okay. Um, let's go over to um, <clears throat> Philippians, the fourth chapter, and pick it up at 10, and then I want to go, go back over to the scripture reading. Um, before I forget, because there's only 15 minutes left, uh, today's Chuck's birthday, and Carol brought cake and cookies, so after class, stick around. For cake and, and cookies. And this, is, this is the last class for the Jamaican people. Oh, okay. And so we'll celebrate your <laughs> your <laughs> you're leaving <laughs> us. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sing happy birthday. Yeah. Okay. So uh, pick it up at ten. Philippians. Philippians four and ten. Mm-hmm. But I rejoice in Yahweh greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I don't know how many times I have said that scripture in my brain, mm -hmm. that that's what I want, mm -hmm. that whatever state I am in, to be content therewith, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I was just thinking at work today. I, I I had just a completely unproductive day. I had no gumption to do anything, <laughs> and um, and I was thinking. Well, you know, I do my work, and I we we are successful. <laughs> so if I have an off day, so, oh well, yeah. you know. And I see these people around me. It's, it seems like a lot of people have been hired lately. Um, fresh minted postdocs just get, getting their first assistant professor job. Mm -hmm. And these people are like just n nuts because they're, they're so, I mean, they're, they're whole, their whole life is on the line. Now, physically it's not. Because if they fail, they can become a scientist like me in another lab, okay? But their whole self-image is what's ex at stake. Mm -hmm. So if they don't succeed, if they don't get the research done, if they don't get the grant money and, and so that they can continue research, and, and the thing of it is is that they, they, they probably don't think about is they have gotten on a treadmill and they will never get off that treadmill. And I specifically chose not to get on that treadmill and become a research scientist and work for someone else who's on that treadmill. 
okay, because I want to be all about class. Now, Yahshua put that within me, okay, and, and, and you know, it helps me sleep at night. It, it, makes, it, it makes me so that, okay, this week, okay, you, you, you know, I bought a new house five years ago because I was so sick of working on houses. We had a project house, the, the one that we had with the pool in Land O'Lakes, okay? This house, it didn't need a few things. It needed everything. And I spent 10 years rebuilding that house. And then after I rebuilt it, it kept falling apart, okay? Because more things would go wrong with it. The house I had in Wisconsin, we bought an old farmhouse, a beautiful house. It didn't have plumbing. It didn't have good electrical. It didn't have central heating. It, did, it needed windows. It needed siding. It needed a roof. But because I was just out of college, that's what we could afford. Okay? I had lots of elbow grease. Okay? Or in other words, I, I could work hard and I knew how to do things, but we didn't have the money to buy one. Okay? So when it, when it came to buying the house that I'm in, and you've all have been there, okay? I bought a brand new house because I never want to work on a house again my entire life. Now, how do you think that's working out for me? <laughs> the kids destroyed the dryer, which came with the house, so we had to buy a new dryer. The washing machine that we got with the house, okay? Now, see, these builders, they had to build everything to code. So the structure of the house is excellent. They put in the nice tile, the granite countertops, and then they got cheap. They got the cheapest appliances they could find and the central air conditioning. Okay? Two years ago, it failed. And it cost, I, I forget what the repair cost, uh, it was between $1,000 and $2,000. Okay? Which is a lot. Okay, $1,200. <laughs> So we got it fixed two years ago, right? <coughs> when we're in Cocoa Beach, Emily gives us a call. She says it's 85 degrees in the house. Well, the, it failed again. And what it is, is, is the builders, they buy cheap stuff. They buy the, 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 the because they want, it, they, want to, they want to wring out of you every penny they can get. So they build a nice house. So now, so this week I got to buy, I, 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 I'm not going to fix this thing and have it fail again in two years. I'm, I'm not going to, so I have to put, you see, three, four thousand dollars into a brand new AC unit. So my whole point is, is you're not going to get out of, you buy a new house, it's going to fall apart. This, this creation is not something that you can say, I'm going to be happy if yeah. I get this job. I'm going to be happy if I meet Mr. Right, okay? Or Mr. Right now, okay? <laughs> you see, it's, it's, it, 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 don't, don't set your expectations in this physical very high. Don't be like these freshly minted postdocs who are who who want to be successful and they look like nervous wrecks i can pick them out you know, there's a brand new postdoc there's a brand new assistant professor i can pick them out because they have this look on their face now it, it's it, the only way i can describe it is suppressed terror <laughs> And, and people wonder why, you know, not like that article online, they mentioned how science, that, that people are fabricating scientific things. It's because of the pressure they're under. They feel their life is at stake, at stake and if they are not successful, mm -hmm. that'll end their life, the life that they envision of having, mm -hmm. you know? We should want to come to class, if anything, just to escape yes. from the world. Mm -hmm. 
You're working all day long, right? You, you're working and, and, and you're dealing with humans. And babies. And, and babies. Yes. But you're, you're customers. Okay? And you have to be nice to them whether you like them or not. I mean, wouldn't you just love to be like totally honest? You know? Say, say you know, just... You know, just tell them. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't. And so, and, 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 you, and you think about, I think about, I got to buy an air, air conditioner. Okay. And I look at my, my bank account, and I'm thinking, well, good thing I got plastic. Yeah. You know? And, it, it, but, but, and, and I could get depressed or upset about that. I could be worrying about my job, you see. But, you see, Yahshua has put it within us, those that see it, that, see, not that you're always going to be content, but he says that, not that I speak in respect for want, I have learned in whatsoever state I am to be content. And you read about the stuff Paul went through, I mean, he talks about how he was shipwrecked. He was stoned. Someone brought that up. He was they, 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 and left for dead. He was, he was in peril, in so many different perils. And yet he says, I found that whatever state I am in, to be content therewith. Yeah. So he's in a shipwreck, floating in the Mediterranean with sharks. It's okay. He's fine with it. You know? And he is fine with it because his faith is in Yahshua. Yes. And that you can be content therewith because you know that you, that, <coughs> I mean, he's never let you down. That's right. he, That's right. yes. he has never let you down. Right. And he has you right where you should be. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And I really do think, you see, that, that you know that that as far as as far as coming to class, okay, this should this shouldn't be a, a, a challenge. This shouldn't be an effort. This should be where you want to be. Wednesdays and Sundays. You know. Anyway, so to be content. And he said, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, to, be, to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Yahshua which strengthens me, yes. strengtheneth me. You see, notwithstanding ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Okay, so I mean that's 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 a good place to be, and if you're not there, keep coming to class, L- listen, study. I I love the whole thing with with David, and I remember reading about Jonathan to this day how that their souls were knit together in love, and I thought what a beautiful, profound way to describe a relationship, you know, and we have that here. You see, now I love my physical family. I'm blessed that my I'm really blessed. My sisters in class. You're blessed that your sisters in class. You see, that is a tremendous blessing. My other sisters, they don't want anything to do with it. You see, my brother, he doesn't want anything to do with it. You see, it's a it's a blessing. But we folks in this gospel, in Yahshua and Messiah, mm-hmm. our hearts are knit together in love. You see, love for each other, but also love for Yahshua and love for the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. And as far as the obedience thing, because there, there's only, there's only, yeah. Okay, let's go back. Let's go to the scripture reading. I was reading in uh, Philippians, the fourth, fourth chapter. I enjoyed the scriptures you sent out, by the way. Last yes. week, that, 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 yes. I love that because I got it at work, and then I got 
you know, I was like in my work and stuff like that. And it was kind of like a, like a little, a, a, like a, a five minute beach vacation. Okay. And then I had to get back to my work, but it's just getting your mind in a better place, you know? So, uh, 10th chapter. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right, pick it up at one and, and start reading down through quickly, please. I want to try to make it down to verse 8. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not, very image, not the very image of things. See, the world thinks that this is the very image of good things. Okay? It's not. It's a shadow. You know? And we could talk about it. Dr. Kinley said, you don't think about your shadow. You walk all over it. Okay? It's a shadow. How much does a shadow weigh? <laughs> have you ever been hit really hard by a shadow okay see that's how Yahweh looks at that law that's how much substance it has to it go ahead can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers they're on too perfect it couldn't do it <clears throat> and they don't stop trying <laughs> you see they, they're, they're on that treadmill okay go ahead but then, would they not have ceased to be offered? See, they would have ceased if they would have realized that it wasn't doing anything. Okay, go ahead. Because that the worshippers, once purged, should have had no more conscience of sin. Right? See, they should have had no more conscience of sin once they've been purged. You see? And we have been purged through Yahshua's sacrifice. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of Every year. So whenever they offer those sacrifices on that day of atonement, they're reminded that they are disobedient and that they fall short. Okay? But they don't take it to the next step, and that is that they need a savior. Okay, go ahead. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. You see, it, it's not even possible for those sacrifices to do that. Okay, go ahead. But a body hast thou prepared. You see, but a body thou hast prepared thee. Go ahead. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Has had no pleasure. See, Yahweh, and, 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 and Sonia was bringing this out, you see, with Samuel. That, that Samuel said that Yahweh would rather he obeyed. So that there didn't have to be more sacrifices. You see, go ahead. Then said I. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O Yahweh. Mm -hmm. so, so Yahshua came in and he did the will. Go ahead. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest not, uh -huh. neither had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. You see, Yahweh set that thing up, but he did not like it. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O Yahweh. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Okay, go ahead. By the which will we, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahshua the Messiah once for all. See, Yahshua, when that was done, when this, when this offering was, 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 see, this was the only offering. See, the, the blood of, of bulls and goats could not, it could not atone for our souls. This was the sacrifice that atoned for that. And you see, under this covenant now, you see, he puts his spirit within you and causes you to be obedient. Obedient to what? The old law? No. See, I, I don't have the time to, to, to really to break it down. But you see... He instills within you his attributes, okay? That wisdom, intelligence, and knowledge. You see, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength. That those attributes in you, in shape and form, are going to cause you to do what he would require. To cause you to be obedient, okay? And I don't want to put a physical manifestation on it. Because you could, you, people have, see, my grandfather smoked cigarettes 
for years and years and years and years. And when he found out it caused cancer, he took the cigarettes, put them down, and never smoked again. People have willpower. People can act. They can act right. You see? But are they right up here? I mean, are they acting? You see, being nice and you see, oh, I love, the, I love, I love Lador and stuff like that. But inside I'm thinking... I don't really love Ladora, you see. You see, they can't get it right on the inside. And the thing that I love about that article on, on the lying is, is that our brains are wired such that we all are liars, okay, from a natural standpoint. And our brains are wired in a way that makes us want to believe other people or makes us gullible to their lies. So he makes people liars, and then he makes them also gullible to believe the lie. You see? That's just a mess. And that's just from a natural standpoint. From a spiritual standpoint, it's the same way. See? you got to be careful. See? This, this last weekend... There was a lot of good things discussed. Okay, they worked with June sixth, six, ran it down through the scriptures. It's real pretty, and then showed examples in the creation. Okay, it was a really good class. Although the last speaker just screamed and yelled so much, I couldn't understand anything he said. But I kind of I got it though. Okay, <laughs> but then another speaker got up and said that Moses never walked up to the top of the mountain that it all occurred up here. And, yeah. And I'm like, well, no, he had to walk up that mountain. Mm -hmm. Because, if, yes, he was elevated spiritually, but the physical reveals the spiritual. Yes. And, yeah, he was 80 years old, yes. but when he died at 120, mm -hmm. it said his eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. Yes. He still could have walked up the mountain <laughs> at 120. You see, and people make stuff up. And people make mistakes, too. You see? You see, stay obedient to the law and the prophets, too. You see? You're told to obey your parents. Dr. Kinley said, your parents now are the law and the prophets. Yes. It's in transcript. Yes. Yes. Oh, that was another thing the speaker said. Yes that we don't need transcripts. My feeling is, is the person probably has a pet theory concept and opinion, and someone brought out a transcript and said, no, this is what the founder said about it. And now, now they want to get rid of transcripts. You see? And this is in Florida. I love Florida. I love the people in Florida. You see? But you got to be on your toes. you got to you, examine me. You see? And look at if I say something that's wrong, please come to me and say, hey, hey, brother, you got this wrong. Okay? And I'm not going to get defensive. My, when, when someone comes up to me and says, I got something wrong, my first response is, I think about it. I don't react to it. I think about it. I go home and meditate on it. I look in the book on it. I, I, see, I, I see if I can find that, whatever it is, down in the Law and the Prophets. Because I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm not here to defend myself. I'm here to preach the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. And if I have something wrong, I want to know about it. See, anyways, I, I'm over, over time by, by uh, uh, two minutes. So anyways, this obedience thing is a real interesting principle, okay? And I'm, I actually really wish I heard that class on Sunday was wonderful, okay? And, and, and I'm going to watch the, I'm glad we got the videos on it. So, but uh, I, I enjoyed everybody tonight, and um, uh, stick around for a cake and uh, cookies. And, and um, uh, Trudy Ann and, and Davine, it was good seeing you both, hopefully. 
Dave, David keeps on talking about wanting to move here, and that would be that would be great. We would love love to have yeah, you yeah. as additions to our class. So uh, thank you for the time. That concludes our class. If anyone has any questions about anything that was spoken of, please approach the speakers. And a reminder that classes are held here every Wednesday from 7 to 9 and every Sunday from 11 to 1. Can all rise for the doxology? Oh. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless, before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy, to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. hallelujah.